Hey guys. So I wanted to do a quick video uh, this morning. Uh, this is a topic that I'm very, very interested in. It does not have much to do with real estate. Um, I'm doing this really as much for my own benefit as anything. I wanted to try and put my thoughts together <laughs> on this. Uh, so I've always really, really been fascinated with kind of human behavior and why we do the things that we do and belief systems and uh, also, human consciousness in general, you know, what is consciousness, uh, where did it come from, and uh, things like that. I've done a lot of research on neuroscience and um, behavior and uh, psychology and then philosophy and stuff like that as well. Um, all things I just find very fascinating for some reason. Um, but there's a couple, a couple concepts that I've learned about. Um, fairly recently within the last year that have really kind of, I guess, turned my world upside down a little bit um, as far as how I think about behavior, um, others as well as my own. Uh, so the first one is the concept of the consciousness spectrum. And uh, I first, I guess, really read about this in a blog post by Tim Urban. So he writes the blog, Wait But Why? Uh, definitely check that blog out if you have not already. Um, he's got some really good things on there that'll definitely uh, make you think. Uh, so the example that he used was, he talked about consciousness as a spectrum. So I guess previously I kind of thought of consciousness as either you have it or you don't. So for example, your dog does not have, you know, the same level of self-awareness that we do. So a dog is either conscious or it's not. And uh, he brought up the concept of a spectrum. And the example that he used is, so if you take a, a staircase and you put an ant on the bottom, and then you put the next step is a chicken, and then you have a, let's say a chimp or a monkey, and then you have a human being, there's obviously different levels of self-awareness there. So a chicken is going to be more self-aware than an ant, a monkey is more self-aware than a chicken, and then us, obviously we're the most self-aware of that group. And that all makes sense to most people. And, uh, you know, people kind of um, intellectually know that. Uh, the part that really got me thinking was, well, why does it end at human beings? And I think the answer is that it probably doesn't. Um, so, you know, another example that he used, so if you take a monkey and you show that monkey an airplane flying through the sky, he has no way of conceptualizing that that airplane was built by a human being and that uh, human beings have actually built that and are flying it. The monkey just has no framework um, for being able, for even being able to understand that. And, uh, you know, it got me thinking, you can always recognize lower levels of consciousness. So as a human being, we're very, very good at recognizing when people, other people, or other animals are operating at a lower level of consciousness than we are. The problem is that our own current level of thinking limits us and actually not only are we incapable of recognizing higher levels of thinking, but we're actually incapable of even understanding that we're incapable of uh, recognizing those higher levels of thinking. And until you're able to kind of put in the work and get yourself to a higher level of thinking, you will not be able to recognize the lower uh, level that you're operating in. Um, if you guys have ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect, <laughs> um, you know, that's definitely an uh, interrelated uh, concept there. So that was kind of the first uh, first concept. <clears throat> and then the second one that I've really been taking a deep dive into uh, was the concept of spiral dynamics. And uh, I first heard about this, oh, probably about eight months ago. And I was doing a lot of research online and listening to a lot of talks about it. And uh, the... Uh, the author of the book, Spiral Dynamics, uh, Glenn, Bleck, Glenn Beck, I believe it was. Um, I, I read a lot of his stuff, and then I finally did actually read uh, the full-blown book on it. And it's a really fascinating subject. And uh, what it talks about is just kind of how belief systems evolve in both individuals and populations. And it's really a response to, uh, you know, additional to complexity. So... The levels are beige, purple, red, blue, orange, green, yellow, and turquoise. And uh, 
beige through green are called they're called first tier um you know basic value memes is what they're called and uh the second, so the yellow and the turquoise, they're more kind of like uh, holistic being value memes. They're a little bit more, uh, I'm not sure what the word for it is. But for example, so beige is instinctive. So this is very much like all about survival, food, water, procreation, warrant, protection, staying alive. That's what's important to beige. Uh, purple is animalistic. So rites, rituals, taboos, superstitions. Uh, things like that. Red is <clears throat> egocentric, so self-gratification, conquest, action, impulsive, and, uh, you know, things like that. Really, those beige, purple, and red in modern society, those ways of thinking don't really exist anymore. Uh, right now, the majority of our population is in either blue, orange, or green. So for the blue meme, it's really all about authority. So meaning, discipline, traditions, morality, rules, um, live for later, saints and sinners. So, you know, religious fundamentalism, um, you know, anybody who is really rule-based, black and white, um, military, uh, tend to be kind of a little bit more of the blue mindset. The next step up from there is orange. So orange is very strategic. It's all about materialism, consumerism, success, image status, uh, growth, winners and losers. So a lot of kind of like the self-development industry is really geared towards orange. Um, people who are, you know, trying to be business leaders and entrepreneurs and things like that. And after learning more about it, I kind of realized myself that I was uh, very much stuck in that orange mindset. Um, the next one after that is green. So green is all about consensus, so egalitarian, feeling, sharing, caring, and community. So, you know, the environmental movement and things like that, that's really coming from a green, uh, you know, a green mindset. And then above that, there's yellow and tur turquoise. So yellow is integral. So it's all about natural systems, self-principle, multiple realities, knowledge, and it's kind of you know, ability to access all the lower levels below it. And then turquoise is holistic, uh, collective individualism, cosmic spirituality, earth changes. I'm just reading off of a chart here. <laughs> and I don't really understand what that means. But <clears throat> what this kind of made me realize is that we all tend to get very stuck in our own ways of thinking. And we tend to believe we're able to realize when there is errors in people's thinking below us. However, we're very, very poor at recognizing the errors in our own models and our own uh, ways of thinking. And uh, it's probably so much of human conflict and problems comes from our inability to, you know, recognize that. So, for example, if you take a fundamentally religious person you put them in a room, so that's a blue person. You put them in a room with an orange person who is very much, you know, all about rationality, um, materialist reductionism, and things like that. You put them in the room and you try to have, you know, a conversation about certain topics for those two people. And it's just never, it's never going to go very well because they're coming from two very completely different belief systems. And uh, they are literally incapable of seeing each other's point of view. Um, and the same goes for, for all levels. The part for me personally that really kind of woke me up a little bit was um, once I really understood uh, this progression and learned a lot about Orange, I started to see that there was quite a few flaws um, in my own way of thinking. Um, so I've, <clears throat> I've, I've been on kind of this self-development journey. And, you know, a big part of that for me was material success, how do I make as much money as I possibly can, how do I grow my business, and, uh, you know, growth at all costs, and things like that, and status, and I was really, really concerned about uh, those kind of things, I guess, during the first part of my um, journey into real estate, and then I started to realize that there are actually levels higher than that, and that, you know, there's kind of an emptiness that comes from just, uh, you know, growth and, uh, you know, the pursuit of wealth, um, really unbounded. So, um, it started making me think about my life journey and where I want to go 
after achieving financial freedom. So I will probably be there fairly soon <laughs> to a point where I really don't have to work anymore. And the question is, do I just keep growing forever? Or, you know, is there something different that I could, uh, you know, put my energy towards that would be, you know, better? So all things that I've been thinking about lately, and uh, I just kind of wanted to share. I really don't have an answer. It's just a topic that I've been diving into uh, very deeply uh, recently, and I uh, thought you guys might want to be interested. So definitely get on YouTube, check out some videos on Spiral Dynamics, and, uh, you know, uh, try to do a little bit of self-reflection and figure out where you think you might be at. And it might it might give you a few uh, you know insights into your own behavior and uh, and uh, you know what's driving your behavior. So that's really it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Bye.